Welcome back friends and we are talking about CSI net group B type of questions and we are actually dissecting those group B questions to understand what are the type of questions they prefer to give us in the exam. Now in this case, uh, in this uh, video tutorial we will be talking about obviously in group B type of questions and among them we are talking about human physiology. Human physio physiology. Okay. Let's talk about human physiology a little bit because uh, let me share you a tip that normally what happens actually in the syllabus of CSI and NET that is a filled with human physiology and all these things. But actually they they are not focusing on this human, human physiology in all aspects because human physiology and anatomy is a huge section. But among them the most important thing to learn is the digestive system, the respiratory system, the blood circulation system and the nervous system These and, and excretory system and uh, respiratory is not that important too but uh, normally circulation system, digestive system, nervous system and the excretory system these are the four systems you need to learn very carefully and among them nervous system especially those action potential and those uh, uh, nerve potential things you need to learn so let's focus on the type of questions now these are going to be the group B questions so obviously these are going to be kind of flat direct questions so let's see which statement is not correct for blood now they are giving us some statements so, so so three of them are wrong one is correct about the blood so you need to learn the basics if you know basics you can answer this question in no time if you don't know the basics you can't simply answer the question so let's see mature rbc is of larger size as compared to its precursor cell so they are want to find us the which is not correct because three of them will be correct one will be not correct mature rbc is of larger size as compared to its precursor cell and I know that yes from the precursor cell mature RBC is definitely not larger precursor is larger than RBC so precursor is larger than RBC so the statement here the first statement is wrong that RBC mature RBC is larger than precursor cell precursor cell always is larger than RBC mature RBC so it's wrong so obviously we can tick on it because the first option is not uh, the correct statement but still we read the rest of the three platelets play important role in blood clotting obviously they play important role so it's correct neutrophils are major phagocytic cells neutrophils are neutrophils are a part of phagocytic cells so they are good basophils uh, basophils are present in least amount that's also a true statement kind of so so option one is wrong here so we can exclude option one out of it so so option one is going to be the correct uh, correct for this. Now this is a question. I always term this question as a, as a knowledge based question, or or we can say a knowledge memorizing type of question. Now let's move on to the next. When a person enters a dark room from bright sunlight, he cannot see anything for a few seconds because now they again provide the situation and they want to know what is what is the cause of this thing because you know people you can become sudden blind when you are just coming from a uh, light bright light to a completely dark room now that's completely depend upon the cells that are present in our retina right rod and cone cells everything is related to that right rod and cone and especially the rod cells in that because rod cells are responsible mostly for those visions and in this case uh, so let's find it out which uh, which of this is the correct statement or which is the cause of this thing first is the rhodopsin pigment of rod cells is inactivated in the bright light which takes time and it's activated in the dark and associated with opsin protein now for solving this question you need to lo know the basic principle of how your eye work right so if you don't know that so you require some concept there you require some knowledge there otherwise you can't answer it so it's kind of knowledge based knowledge memorizing type of questions otherwise you simply can't answer so if you don't know how your eye function how your eye is made up with rod cells and cone cells how the vision is being conducted in your brain you can't answer it because i know that rhodopsin pigment of rod is inactivated in bright light so it's true and it also takes some time to be revived back to its previous situation so that's why option one to me is going to be a correct but let's read the rest of them then scotopsin proteins of rod are denatured no uh, that's not denaturation never occurs because in bright light it's getting unactivated then it becomes again reactivated so it, it is not going to be the answer all scotopsin are bound with retinal uh, retinal in uh, rod cells it's not not also true all scotopsin becomes non functional in the bright light that's that's also not so it's not about 
the scotopsin protein it's all about rhodopsin because that that's the true thing that's the pigment that's present in your rod cells the rhodopsin that's responsible for those uh, low light vision and low light vision is responsible with the rod and rhodopsin protein is uh, linked with the dot cell so obviously uh, it is getting deactivated when in bright light and then suddenly for the reactivation of it it took some time so that's why option one is the correct option so let's put it option one is the correct option for that so let's move on to the next what would be effect on serum concentration of TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone if a bolus of thyroxine is injected to a person now that's a completely concept based conceptual memorizing you don't need to apply your uh, you don't need to mug up things for answering them because uh, in this question that they, they will check your concept your basic knowledge what would be the effect on serum concentration of TSH if a bolus of thyroxine is injected to a person right so it's kind of concept that if a thyroxine hormone TSH hormone is injected if it is injected to a person what is going to be the level of serum TSH right now first thing is that remain unchanged now it won't remain unchanged because we are injecting uh, those because slightly it will be increased for the first some time right second thing first increase and then come to normal right so that thing you may think that can be a correct answer because first slightly increase then come to normal let's read the rest, rest of it initially decrease but after short time it will be normal right and fourth one is remain high for prolonged period of time it is not possible because remaining high is not definitely a, a part of it because obviously the hormones activity is completely different if we inject it into the blood stream actually it will be there for a while then it will drop now usually the sy system or ho hormone is there if in your blood there is a presence of huge amount of hormone uh, of TSH your body TSH system or the secretory region for TSH will stop secretion of TSH anymore because there is a presence of TSH in your blood serum then for that reason actual level of TSH initially decreases that's kind of oxymoronic but that's the true situation guys the initial uh, initial concentration of your blood uh, of your serum TSH decreases but after short time it will be normal because after short time when your blood TSH will be diso dissociated from there it will be dissolved and it will be uh, spread it in different regions then again your body cells start to take off the normal TSH production and again the TSH synthesis and the concentration of TSH in your blood serum become normal so that's why option 3 is the correct option for these questions and you know it is entirely conceptual if you don't know how your endocrine system is working you simply can't answer it simply skip this question move on to the next one so that's the way guys actually you don't need to solve all the questions it might uh, be difficult for you to look for that there are too many questions too many regions from the questions but you don't need to answer each of them independently in that case if suppose you are having many questions you are having 50 70 questions from them you need to answer only 50 percent of it correctly then you to easily get through csi net grf right so that's why this is it guys uh, learn more read more and nothing is comparable with reading more and getting knowledge so that's it guys and i hope that's helpful 